Joining me now, Senator Chris Coons, Democrat of Delaware. He's a member of the Judiciary and Foreign Relations Committees. Uh, Senator, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, let me just start with that. Does former President Trump risk inciting more violence on Saturday with this statement in support of the January 6th attackers? What, what was your reaction to that? Well, Jim, the best thing that former President Trump could do would be to simply stay out of this. His role in inciting the riot uh, in, on January 6th uh, that resulted in the deaths of several police officers um, and uh, disgraced and defaced our nation's capital uh, and put so many at risk, um, I think is a deep stain on his record uh, of service as President of the United States. Um, but President Biden is focused on moving our country forward. Uh, the U.S. Capitol Police uh, are making adequate preparations. Uh, we in the Congress did appropriate several billion dollars after the January 6th riot to strengthen uh, the perimeter and the security of the Capitol and to provide uh, badly needed and deeply deserved support for the U.S. Capitol Police. So I'm cautiously optimistic we'll get through this weekend uh, without more incidents of violence, but um, they are prepared to protect the Capitol. Um, and frankly, uh, as President Biden showed in his remarks today, he's focused on moving us forward uh, and on helping the country get out of the pandemic, uh, recover from the recession and be on a stronger footer, footing going forward. Yeah, I want to ask you about that in just a moment. But first, uh, we're, we're just learning that the House Select Committee is seeking uh, Pentagon documents to learn more about the January 6th attack and what the Joint Chiefs Chairman did in the last days of the Trump presidency. Do you have any any concerns about how General Milley reportedly reviewed nuclear uh, protocols and handled a call with his uh, Chinese counterpart. Uh, how did the Joint Chiefs Chairman do in that situation as it's been reported, do you think? Well, Jim, uh, I haven't obviously had a chance to read the book, Peril, but based on press accounts, on excerpts from the book, um, my impression is that he uh, was preceded by Secretary of Defense uh, Esper in reaching out uh, to his senior Chinese military counterpart. And he did so based on uh, intelligence reports that the Chinese believed we were preparing for a sneak attack. And so what he was doing um, from press accounts is well within the purview of his role as chairman of the Joint Chiefs um, and in partnership with the then Secretary of Defense um, to reach out and try and defuse those tensions, to try and avoid um, a preventable exchange um, look, China is an increasingly assertive uh, regional and global military power. And I think uh, if the chairman of the Joint Chiefs acted, as it's been reported, as I've understood it, um, and that was briefed to and shared with other military leaders and the intelligence community, um, this is uh, squarely within his lane um, to avoid needless conflict with other countries based on the intelligence he had available at the time. And uh, getting to the uh, Biden agenda, President Biden is touting his economic agenda, saying the country faces an inflection point. But does he have a plan to convince moderate Democrats that you see uh, who simply don't see the need to spend what uh, Biden wants to spend on this uh, huge uh, what's been referred to as a human infrastructure plan? Um, what are you saying to convince some of your colleagues to get on board? Well, Jim, uh, President Biden met in person with Senator Sinema and Manchin. Uh, he's been actively engaged over the last couple of months uh, in helping members of Congress who are centrist or who are more progressive uh, understand and embrace his agenda to reduce the costs for working families, to reduce the cost of health care, of daycare, of higher education, of uh, workforce training, uh, and to make the investments we need to make over the coming decade to make sure that we're positioned to grow and grow quickly. Uh, I was thrilled in August when we passed on a bipartisan basis uh, a landmark infrastructure bill. Uh, and now we are working in the Democratic caucus to pass the follow on um, investment that's badly needed uh, to make it possible for Americans to get back to work by providing uh, more affordable access to high quality uh, preschool and daycare, uh, by reducing the cost of health care and by making sure that every American uh, is paying their fair share of the cost of moving forward. Um, it's not clear to me exactly how much this package will ultimately cost, but I'll remind you, it'll be spread over 10 years and it'll build a more solid foundation under America's middle class. So President Biden's very persuasive and I think he's making the case and making it well. All right. I think that's code for the negotiations are underway as we speak. All right, Senator Chris Coons, uh, thanks that's so right. much for your time. We appreciate it. Coming up, a bizarre Thank twist. You,